Kevin Dana joining you courtside alongside Golden State or Warriors legend, San Francisco and Philadelphia Warriors legend, Tom Macheri. Tom, thanks for joining us. We can start in a whole lot of places with your illustrious career in the NBA, but you're here in Santa Cruz. What do you think about your experience here in Surf City so far? Well, it's wonderful. I, I didn't know exactly what to expect, but once I walked in here, the energy is terrific. And, you know, the people that are doing the job here in Santa Cruz are doing a fabulous job here. And, and what have you thought about the talent you've seen here at the D-League level? Well, th this is the place. You know, there's a big controversy going on now about where basketball is going to go. Is it, you know, is college basketball going to survive our D leagues and, and minor leagues? Is this the way that's going to happen? I think D leagues are absolutely essential for the NBA today, especially with the one and done kinds of kids that are coming out. Two guys, you know, they come in after only two years of college or one year of college. You know, they have to develop somewhere. Now, there are very, very few lottery picks that come in and, and immediately impact yeah. a, uh, the NBA team these days. So they, the D-League is going to become increasingly more important as the NBA proceeds in the future. Now, we're joined by Warriors legend Tom Macheri, the first Warrior to have his number retired, number 14, for what was then the San Francisco and Philadelphia Warriors. And back when you played for the Warriors, they had training camp in Santa Cruz at Cabrillo College. Tell us a little bit about playing in Santa Cruz. No, no I think it was at, uh, at, uh, U at the University of Santa Cruz. Okay. I yeah, see. and and we uh, it was our first year here after Philadelphia, and uh, and Alex Hannum was our uh, well, it was actually the, the the first two years, and then the year that Alex Hannum took over for Bob Farrick. And that was in uh, 63. We won the Western Division Championship. So we started our journey right here in Santa Cruz. What did you? What were some of your favorite memories as a Warrior? Well, I, l let me first tell you that one of my favorite memories in Santa Cruz when we were practicing yeah. here, when we were training camp here, was that uh, Kim Novak used to pick up Wilt after every practice in her Bentley. And all of us used to rush to the door to try and get a good look at her. <laughs> so that was one of my memories. Of course, my my favorite memory is back in Philadelphia with the Philadelphia Warriors when, when Wilt scored 100 points. I was a rookie that year. Yeah, you scored 16 points in 16. that game. You, you had a pretty good game, 7 for 12 from the floor in that one. Did you know you were watching history as Wilt scored 100 points? I did, yes. Uh, by, by the middle of the third quarter, everybody pretty much knew what was going on happen whether it was going to be a hundred points or 96 points or but something very special was going on now do you guys get box scores back then after the third quarter did you know Wilt had 69 going to the fourth was there a push to get him to 100 <laughs> well there was once once he got to about 80 points and it got into the fourth quarter then everybody was trying to get the ball to Wilt and we were playing the New York Knickerbockers at the time not a great team but not a bad team and they were doing everything to stop it they were fouling everybody. The minute we inbounded the ball, they tried to foul somebody except Will. So we actually by the end of the game, we were throwing the ball from out of bounds all the way to Wilt on the other end of the court. Oh, wow. He caught it. They would foul him. They figured he was a terrible free throw shooter, and I thought I think he shot 22 for 23 that day. Yeah, he so, was yeah. pretty good at the foul line. He was 36 for 63 from the floor. He got a, quite a lot of shot attempts up. Now, Tom, talking about your career, 10-year career in the NBA, you earned the nickname the Mad Russian. Did you like that nickname for, for the way you kind of played and known for kind of mixing it up on the court a little bit? Well, you you know, I was a I was a finesse forward. I've always claimed that I was a finesse forward. But uh, when Rick Barry was uh, uh, came to the team after the third year, um, then they made me a power forward. They said, "Well, if you're going to score points, you better go to the offensive board. And if you're going to go to the offensive board, you got to knock a few people down. Yeah. Uh, am I right? Of course, absolutely. Got to <laughs> knock a few people down. And I've always maintained that uh, that that a foul on the offensive board is is totally legitimate. It, it certainly it certainly is. So we're here with Tom Macheri. We're going to have to let you go in just a little bit, but you're also a member of the Nevada Writers Hall of Fame. You're a poet, a known poet. You've come out with a murder mystery novel or a mystery novel. Uh, what are you doing? You still writing these days? I am. I'm still writing. Uh, my, my latest book of poetry just came out. It's called Sweat, New and Selected Poems About Sports. I, I didn't intend to write a lot about basketball and sports, but it, it wound up to be about 90 poems all about sports, which has been great fun, and it's been out now for about a month. 
month and doing very well. All right, Tom, thanks so much for your time and enjoy the second act. Oh, nice to be with you, Kevin. All right, that's Tom right, Macheri, bye -bye. Warrior Legend. We'll be back in 90 seconds.